If you have never seen a video on this channel before, you've probably noticed this and you're thinking, wow, he's probably going to talk about graphics cards. And you are not wrong. Specifically today, we are talking about riser cables for graphics cards and specifically some instances where a 1x extension like this is actually really bad and detrimental to your performance if that's what you're after. So first off, let's talk about why you would want a riser cable. Why wouldn't you just want to be like everyone else and fit in with everyone by taking your motherboard and your graphics card and just plugging them in like that? Well, there's a couple reasons. First, maybe you want to see the front of your graphics card that you paid hundreds of dollars for, so you want to mount it funny, and that requires some kind of an extension. You can't just rotate your whole system because often the bottom of a case doesn't have a window. Other situations could include if your motherboard has a lot of PCIe slots in a row and your double wide graphics cards cover up all those slots so you can't fit in all the GPUs you need. There is a huge variety of reasons, but let's get into some benchmarks of how a 1x PCIe riser cable could actually hurt your performance. And we're going to start off, first of all, with folding at home. Folding at home is calculated much differently than mining for a cryptocurrency. Folding at home relies on complex simulations of protein structures, so it's a lot closer to an actual 3D game or some kind of a physics simulation. And because of the complexity of what you're modeling, not just doing mathematical equations one after the other, you absolutely need a great connection, a fast one. Now, when it comes to mining, here is with the PCIe riser cable, and here is without. No difference. Here in Rocket League, we have the graphics card, a FirePro W7000, about on par with an R9 270 or 270X, in green plugged into the PCI slot getting full bandwidth. In red, we are using a 1x PCIe riser. On the left, we have our frame time average. In the middle, we have our 1% low, and on the right, our 0.1% low. No real significant difference in Rocket League drop shot online matches. Any variance is pretty much on par with anything you would get from one match to another, so no real loss here for using a PCIe riser cable. Perhaps if you were playing something more demanding or physics heavy than this game on a 1080 Ti, you might see a difference, but this test demonstrates that for mainstream or casual players, they're not going to notice much of a difference. Hopefully this video has helped you to understand when to use and when not to use a PCIe riser cable, especially one that takes you down to a 1x connection. Now, this particular cable is actually pretty good. I've ordered six of these and they have all worked flawlessly for a long period of time. So, because they've worked well for me, I'm going to recommend them and include a link to Amazon down in the description that will take you to this. Hopefully you found this video super useful. If you did, make sure to give it a like, leave a comment down below. What are some other riser cables that you've tried that have worked out well for you? Thanks for leaving that comment. Now that you've left a comment and hit like on this video and made sure that you're subscribed, make sure to check out some of our previous videos. Thanks again. See you in the next one.